from the bad old days of mining into the present. This is Ashington, the biggest mining village in the world. 30,000 people live here and most of them depend on mining for their livelihood. From the bustling centre of 20th century Ashington, the story of coal winning in Northumberland goes back to 1236, when the monks of Newminster Abbey, now ruined, picked sea coal washed up on the shore near Blythe. Much of the output of number three area still comes from under the waters of the North Sea. This successful coal winning area spreads its interests wide. Its collieries extend from the Scottish border in the north to the Wandsbeck River in the south. The names of its pits are the sinews of Northumberland. Ashington, Chilbottle, Lionmouth, Linden, Pegswood, Woodholm, Black Hill, Ellington, Whittle, Newbegin, Broomhill, Stubbswood, Hawksley, Longhurst Drift. The area is in business as a farmer because under this farming land, coal is being won. The area runs its own internal railway because men have to be taken to their jobs and because coal has to be taken to the washeries and later to the ports. What is the success of number three area? Since 1947, output has been boosted over 40%. The means to achieve this rise are very much the same as in other key areas up and down the country. Reconstruction, mechanization, a measure of automation, like the new automatic winder at Lineworth Colliery, which winds coal without an engine man having to be in charge. Number three area knows very well that the need for coal now can override the time that a large new pit can take in the making. Side by side with their major reconstruction schemes, drift mines are probing down fast into unexploited seams. Here at Longhurst, a quick return drift will be turning out a thousand tons a day by 1959. Right at the center of the area at Ashington Colliery, such a drift is being sunk in the colliery yard itself. At the same time, Ashington, one of the nation's million ton a year units, is being expanded and reconstructed to keep its place in the top rank of British pits. The spirit of mining is bred into the men of the area. Improvements underground and on the surface make their job a sight easier than it was in the old days. But they can still do with more local men of the right caliber. To this end, young miners expand their training by attending courses at the County Technical College. And number three area has its own training branch to instruct young men in the manifold skills modern mining needs. Area General Manager Heinsen, who has seen the area grow in productivity over the last quarter of a century, sums up the reasons for number three's success. Having planned reconstruction on a big scale, we've spent 10 million pounds to date, introduced mechanization where it didn't exist before, intensified mechanization in the remaining pits, especially with six continuous miners. We've built a railway. We've kept on improving, while output has kept on increasing. It has so far increased by 40% since 1947. We have a good team spirit. In my opinion, nothing is more important in this difficult but satisfying business of winning coal.